there's players that bring in been putting in like there's, there's a surprise Yanni bit when like Aiken was on from doing his crew shit that, that he's got back to those heights and doesn't seem to be dipping you know, since the All Ireland he's just kind of kept at that level. Yeah, no, it doesn't surprise me at all. Um, you know, I've played with Brendan since first year in secondary school, and I know the type of character that Brendan is. Um, the work that he's put in to come back from his crucial ligament injury and to get his body in the shape that he is now, and like we're seeing the performances there, and sure, it's it's great. Like Brendan was incredible for Tipperary this year, and he kept that form going into the club action and really led that Bursley team as well. So he's um he's an amazing athlete, uh, amazing leader, and. It's just been, you know, a joy to watch for everyone. There seems to be a big bond between, you know, kind of you, him, Paddy, Noel Gaz, that kind of that older crew that that you come through kind of a lot together, and you know, I suppose kind of winning your third medal together then uh, last year. Yeah, a huge bond. Uh, you know, we're great friends as well as as uh, hurling together for years, but we've we've great friendships there, and um, Brendan will always be someone that will be close uh, in in my life, regardless of hurling or hurling or not. Um, he was a great friend before any of this started and will be after, so it's it's uh, we've a great bond and I suppose that does help then on the pitch. Will Bonner do a Brendan on it, do you think? Uh, I'd say <laughs> Bonner <laughs> Bonner is a he's a very hard trainer and uh, you know, a very ambitious guy and he'll be back better than ever, there's no doubt about that. And Gleam Sheedy was saying just before Christmas they felt he was ahead of schedule. I mean, have you been chatting to Bonner lately? He'd probably been maybe chatting more to Brendan about his knee but in terms of like, you having to come back from a serious enough injury as well have you been giving him any advice? Um, no, Bonner look in fairness unfortunately we've had a few guys that have had uh, the knee injuries over the last few years so he's um, he's taken advice I suppose from the experts and the physios and that and working with the s and uh, so um, you know I'm sure he's been in contact with the likes of Brendan and Connor Hammersley as well last year uh, did the knee and you know Michael Cahill and a few lads like that. Like so, I'm sure they're all talking to each other about it. Thankfully, I have, I have no experience of that injury. Um, but all I know is Bonner is is in the shape of his life and he's coming back uh, with great strength. And you know, I was never going to be in doubt really because he's the type of guy that when he puts his mind to something like his recovery or his training, that he'll always be trying to better himself and get back stronger than he ever was. Is he back in the grass? Is he doing a bit which he? Yeah. He's doing a bit of running. He's not not with the group, but he's doing a little bit of running. Yeah. Is Billy McCarthy back training, do you know? Um, I think he's due back with Turles now, but he's not back in with us yet, no. Because he did a desperate one trying yeah, to get back from that. Very, very bad injury for such a, a great young hurler after coming in from... He was probably the shining light, really, out of a poor season in 2018 for us. Like, so um, it was a real pity now, so hopefully hopefully he'll come back to himself and get the body right, and, and it'd be great to get him back in around the panel at some stage. Did it take a lot of work from you, Seamus, in around 2018 after the injury you had there to sort of get back full pace for 2019 to hit the league hard? Like? Um, yeah, I suppose it was kind of... 2018 was kind of gone as really early, like the 9th of June, I think it was, when we were knocked out. So it was a pity because I was kind of only after getting back training a few weeks at that stage and um, the games were someone co- coming so quick then at that stage. It was tough because we had four games in four weeks. Um but then I could start feeling a bit better as the club season went on actually when we were gone, when we were gone from Tipperary and I kind of tried to keep going then over the winter just to make sure I could hit the ground running in 2019 and um, thankfully that helped uh, you know, build a good platform in the Alliance League then in the start of 2019 and um, just tried to keep going after that and keep momentum building but um, yeah, it was just a bit unfortunate in 2018 because I'd say maybe if the structure of the championship was a bit different I could have maybe been a little bit better, a little bit sharper, but it was the fact that we had four games in four weeks was probably tough enough on it. Did um, being made captain uh, get it even more from you, do you think? I mean, different hurlers, different footballers react differently being given the captaincy. Some it brings to another level, others just feel far to be focused on themselves. And you were coming back after the injury and all that, so it was another responsibility on top of you wanting get, to get back to your best anyway. I mean, did you thrive or how did you feel when, when Liam said it to you? Yeah, well, look, I, I felt very honoured, um, surprised and very over the moon, really, and, and just so honoured to, to get the chance to captain the team. Now, I don't know what the story is for, for the year coming now, but it was great to be able to do it last year. And um, I just, look, I just love the responsibility and, you know, the more that I, I'm well able to handle it, so I just kind of take it in my stride and I don't put pressure on myself. So it's, um, it's a nice tag to have, but I'm very lucky as well because we have so many leaders in the Tipperary dressing room. Um, you know, it's not it's not too much falling on my shoulders that I wouldn't have been kind of doing uh, previous to the title anyway. So um, you know, it's a very it's an easy transition really, 
and um, a lot of good guys there to help with. Does it, feel like, does it feel like there's another group going to be pushing on now? I mean, I suppose there's kind of some of the 2018 under 21 team were kind of coming on a sub last year. They went there next year on, and then you'd be on the 20 team from last year. Does it feel like there's a there's another group kind of coming? Um, definitely, yeah. Sure. Look, we had the 21s all Ireland champions two years ago and 20s last year. So, um, look, they're the future of Tipperary. So the more of them, I suppose, they can get a bit of game time now in, in the Alliance League and things like that, um, to try and force their way in. Um, that's great because. You know the older guys. We want that competition. We want that um, the competition for places there. Like we want to fight for the jerseys there, and it'll benefit us all really. Like they're going to give us challenges. We'll give them challenges, and hopefully, uh, we'll have a really good good mix together then. And um, you know, like every year, I suppose you're trying to find uh, who's the the next lad that's going to step in, or who's going to be the the young lad that kind of comes out of nowhere. Like so, it's um. You know, it's a great opportunity in the LNs League for these for these guys as well to set themselves up for the summer. But, you know, uh, the older lads aren't going to step aside either uh, too easily. So. Is that something you embrace personally, that there's a few of those young lads are inside forwards as well? Um, yeah, like, you know, you love the challenge and, um, you know, you love training with these guys because, you know, as well as them trying to learn from us, we can learn an awful lot from them as well because they're coming in kind of carefree, uh, just playing their best hurling, you know, uh, full of confidence, I suppose, after after the last number of years with the 21s and that. So, and they have their own ideas too, so we're all trying to learn off each other and trying to benefit each other. And Jake Morris spoke impressively at a thing here towards the end of last year. We were talking about that, what you were saying, you want the young guys to back themselves, and he was very much backing himself, and he reckons that generation of lads, while they have an awful lot of respect for the older players like yourselves, are, going, are, are coming for you, sort of a thing. Like yeah. he, so <laughs> that's what you want, like, isn't it? Yeah, well, I hope I hope he's he, he, they are coming for us, like because, um, as I said, that can only shift standards upwards, and you know we might think you know be at a level there where we think the standard is, and I'd be hoping that the younger fellas will come along and, and try and blow that out of the way, and, and hopefully we'll rise with them, and we'll all you know we'll all create a new standard together. This is the third time in your career that you're starting a season as defending champions. Is, is there anything from the last two when you kind of look back that you know, something you've learned from or or, or anything? Kind of in your approach? Um, no, I think, look, like every year, you need a bit of luck too. Um, you know, 2017 here, we were in hard luck in the semi final, only for a, a fantastic Joe Canning score at the end, really uh, took it from our grasp. So um, I just think you take every game as it comes, and it doesn't matter whether you're coming in trying to do two in a row, three in a row, whatever it is, you just have to be, uh, I suppose, preparing as best as you can every day, you go out and train and uh, to try and perform at the weekend um, in the games. So I just think. The Allianz League uh, will kind of know where we are really at the end of that. Um, Limerick coming to town on, on Saturday evening now is going to be a huge challenge and that will, I suppose, give us a lot of learnings too, uh, to take forward as well. So um, we'll just try and build uh, build the blocks up again from because we know we're, everyone's back in a level playing field. Mm -hmm. Once the, the calendar year turns, everyone goes back into the pack again and, you know, it, it's, a, it's a tough championship. It's a tough league and, uh, you know, we'll see who emerges and... and We'll kind of take it week by week and see where we're going. When you started there, I suppose, on Kelly was kind of the, the attacking leader <coughs> uh, of the team. What's he been kind of, I know he kind of maybe had a role last year, but it seems to be, it, it seems a big one now this year, the fact that he's going to select it. Yeah, definitely. Um, Schluck Owen is fantastic. You know, any chance you could have someone like Owen Kelly in around your dressing room, yeah, it's brilliant for us all because, you know, the immediate respect that he'd have just from being a legend, he's probably an idol to every one of the people that are in the dressing room, but. He's been a great leader, and I've got the chance to share the dressing room with him, which has been an absolute honour. And I, to get to do it again now and to learn from to learn from the best um, can only be a huge benefit to all of us. When you first came into the Tipperary team, Seamus, you were banging in goals for fun, maybe eight, nine, ten, and there could have been a bit of a dip then, maybe eleven. Like, what would have been the things you worked on in your game then to sort of get back like a key player in the Tipperary team? Um, yeah, I suppose like there was a couple of years where maybe you suffered a bit of uh, not, not getting your game and um, I think that it was kind of um, a bit of freedom came into your game it's just kind of experience as well when you get a bit older um, I think obviously I had a bit of more responsibility Eamon O'Shea kind of put a bit more be bit belief in me there I suppose and uh, you know put me on freeze and things like that just to try and get my confidence up and going again like so and I think it just kind of as I said momentum is, is great really it gives you great confidence and belief and you know, thankfully I had a good year then in 2014 and I kind of kept belief from that then to, to brought, brought into the following years and that's so I think there was no major change really, just maybe a bit more kind of experience really kind of helped. 
Just another question on Owen Kelly. When you talk to him, he seems unbelievably passionate and very inquisitive. He's always sort of asking questions. What 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 do you find with your relationship with him? Um, I think I suppose when I I just when Owen last year hurling himself, like I just thought because when I was growing up, Owen was my idol all the time, and you know I just tried to you know you try to copy his game really, like and try and be like him. And then his final year, he was out behind the goals. Uh, I was practicing freeze, and he'd be behind the goals, hitting the ball out. Like he was that kind of a humble fella, mm. which is great. And he's still always there, and he's still always trying to learn and trying to be better. And uh, you know, he's he's kind of he's a huge influence on us. He's a huge positive influence because his leadership skills in his dressing room were incredible in 2010, and and for years before and after that. But um. Uh, you know, you're always going to try and pick up little little bits of information from him because he knows it. He's like he doesn't know it all, but he's but he's uh, you know he's been through it all, and um, I just think he's going to be really valuable for for players like myself, and then I suppose even more so for players like you mentioned, Jake Morris, the Marcos, you know, the inside forwards. Um, he's going to be huge for us, and you know we got a I suppose a few snippets of how good he could be for us last year, and now he's in as a full selector role, so. Um, he can only be a huge help. The same on his role changed all with the new title, or is it effectively given the title what he was already doing? Sort yeah. of thing. <laughs> I'm hearing about this title today, yeah. anyway, so I don't know what I don't know what he's going to be doing, but yeah. it's great to have him involved, anyway. Yeah, yeah I, I can't even remember his performance directors or whatever, but that's that's his thing, isn't it? Getting performance out of guys, obviously true tactically, but he is a way with players, doesn't he, in terms of unlocking their potential? He does. He's great. Um, look. I wouldn't have had half the career I've had only for Eamon O'Shea, to be honest. Um, he's a huge influence on my life. And um, just having him in around the setup is, we're very, very privileged to have the backroom team, the complete backroom team that we have. Um, I think that Liam, it's great to have Liam involved, but he's set up a backroom team around him as well. That's ex- exceptional. And it's we're very lucky to be players at this time. Just, great. just one more just going back to what Vinton asked there about defending champions people kind of throw out saying you're up there to be shot at and teams even when they're playing in the league want to raise their game because they're defending champions do you think that's a cliche or is have you found is there a discernible difference or? Um, to be honest my, my opinion would be once the year turns once January comes everyone is on a level playing field um, I don't think we didn't look at Limerick last year and kind of say look they're defending champions let's do this let's do that you know, you concentrate on your own performance when when you're in preparation mode or in pre- preparation for your own team. Um, you know, you give every other team the respect that they deserve when you're when you're I suppose you're getting ready to play them in a championship or a league game. But um, I think everyone is back down in the as a level playing field now. We're all in the pack and we'll all be hunting for the first bit of silverware now with the with the Alliance League, and then we'll be all in the hunt for Munster Championship and and, and so on. You know, so. But you start it all now, which are, you lay the foundations now here, um, I suppose, starting Saturday evening. And, and that's the only game in town for us at the moment. Thanks for watching our game. Don't forget to like and share the videos. And if you're new to the channel, hit subscribe.